If you guys haven't seen the series, the three-part series where I built this Ultimate AMD rig, make sure you go and check those out. But this presented the perfect opportunity to make a video that you guys have been asking me to make, well, forever, because I promised forever ago that I was gonna do it. But I'm finally doing it, better later than never, how to clone your Windows 10 drive. That way you can have more than one of them. All right, so there's a lot of different tools that we can use to do this. We are gonna be choosing the uh, free variety because why not? There are plenty of free options out there that can do this task with, uh, without having to pay for things. So the one we're using today is the AOMI, A-O-M-E-I Backupper. There's two versions of this. There's a backupper and then a partition assistant. Um, we only need the partition assistant if you're going from a backup uh, if you're cloning from a smaller drive to a larger drive. And the reason for that, and we'll talk about that in a second, uh, is if you're going from a smaller drive to a larger drive, it's gonna turn the entire drive it's cloning into a partition on the larger drive. So the excess that's not being used will be a separate partition and will show up like a second drive in that one hard drive. Because you can slice up drives into partitions and they will all show up as individual drives. So you would use the partition assistant to just extend that volume to being the total size of the drive. There's other tools you can use to do it. I believe the Windows uh, Disk Management tool can even do it for you. However, we uh, would be using the partition assistant for that. So the AOMEI Backupper, there's a free version and then there's a pro version. Now all the things we need are available in the free version. You just have to sign up for their newsletter and that's all it takes to get it for free. You can cancel the newsletter later if you like. Um, but hey, given the fact that it's free, I think that's a very fair trade. So there's a couple of different options here. You've got new backup and new sync, and then you've got all these options here on the left. So the way we've got this set up is I've got my one terabyte NVMe SSD drive in there. And then I'm actually just using an external dock here for a 980 gigabyte or 960 gigabyte Patriot Ignite uh, SATA SSD. So I don't think most people would be going from an NVMe to a SATA, but the drive type really doesn't matter. The only thing the drive type is gonna determine is how fast the copy sort of happens. Um, and there is a part of this that takes quite a while. So there will be an intermission during this video. So what we're gonna do is make sure that your drives are installed uh, either through a, an interface like this or in the computer or whatever. You can clone it in the computer, let's say it's an NVMe, you can put it in one of the NVMe slots, clone it, and then take it out and put it in another computer. You can plug in the SATA cables and the SATA power for a SATA drive, you know, internally or externally. The only thing is USB 3.0 is actually gonna be a slower process in terms of the copying because USB 3.0, 3.0 interface is not as fast as SATA 6. So I'm slowing it down technically by doing it this way. However, it's more simple to just stick it in that. And I think I got that for like 30 bucks or something like that off Amazon or apparently Best Buy because it's Insignia. All right, so on the left over here, you're gonna click Clone, and then we're gonna click Disk Clone. Now the thing about disk cloning here, Windows 10 has a very specific partition type and a very specific install. You can't just clone a drive by using any clone tool and have it work. So you have to make sure that you use a tool that's capable of actually cloning the disk exactly as it's, it's set up, the partitions, the drive type, the file type, all of that, to make sure that Windows will actually boot. Otherwise, you can get a cloned drive, but then when you go to boot, it won't actually boot. So this is my first time trying this particular tool, and we're gonna see in real time how it goes. So you have to choose a source disk. In this particular instance, it is uh, disk zero. This is our NVMe, it's a two terabyte NVMe. So we're going from a two terabyte drive down to a 960 gigabyte drive. So that particular clone, I won't have to worry about doing the whole uh, partition management thing because it's just gonna partition to the end of the drive because the drive partition for the source is larger than the actual destination. Now the partition size being larger isn't a problem as long as the data doesn't exceed the amount of storage on the drive that we're going to. So as long as the data is less and the partition is larger, from the source to the destination, then the partition will be the whole drive and then the data will copy and not fill up the entire drive. It'll tell you though if, it, if the drive's too small, right? So clearly you wanna make sure you have enough volume. So now that we selected our source, hit next, our destination disk. This disk two is our 960 gigabyte drive. Now it does have a Windows install on there now. It's just a drive we've used in the past for other things. One of the things it's gonna do is it's going to format and remove all of the partitions that are on that drive. So you don't have to pre-format it. You don't have to pre-partition uh, resize or get rid of any of those partitions, it will do it for you. Now, one of the things it's gonna do here when you hit next 
And it says, after performing the operation, the existing uh, partitions are going to be removed, like I just said. It's basically saying, hey, make sure this is how you want it. Because anything on that drive, when the process is complete, will be gone. But fortunately, what it does when you click Start Clone here, is it's going to start copying the data. And what's going to happen here is it's going to pre-allocate the data. It's going to make sure that there's enough space on the new drive before it starts copying or formatting anything. So think of this as like when you download something with Steam and it does that whole pre-allocating disk thing, it's the same thing. It's making sure everything is in order before it starts. That way you don't have destruction of data prior to it actually being able to complete. Because that would suck if it's suddenly going, okay, we're, gonna make, we're, we're just gonna delete the partitions and start copying. And then get to the end of the drive and go, oh crap, we're out of space. And that's where we stop. Obviously that wouldn't be a working install, it wouldn't be a proper clone, and it would be destruction of data unnecessarily. You'll probably notice it'll get to 72% really quickly. And then it might, well 73%, it might look like it freezes here. This is where you need to just be patient. If you're going from a spinning drive to an SSD, which there's two common scenarios here I think people are gonna fall under. You're going from a hard drive or a spinning disk to an SSD, or you're going from a smaller drive to a larger drive. If you're going from a spinning drive or a standard SATA drive, the copying speed is going to be fairly slow, especially a hard drive. Remember, most hard drives cap out at about 100 megabytes to maybe 150 megabytes per second when it's copying a large file. You're clearly copying a ton of small files. So if you click copying data here, at least it'll give you an analyzing volume uh, status. This is that part where I just said, it's making sure that the new drive is capable of accepting the current drive and its partition before it starts. So we're only 5% in and all that time I've been talking, that's because we have, well, 819,264 files. That's files, not size. So I think we only have about 500 gigabytes of actual data on this drive that's being copied. So as you can see, this will take a while. We're at 6%. This is the part where you need to be uh, diligent and wait and be patient. If, if for some reason your system loses power or restarts, nothing was damaged, like I just said, nothing has started copying, no partitions have been removed until the analyzing process is done and it starts copying the data, which will go faster than analyzing usually, uh, you would just have to start the process over. And then any analyzing time that you spent that didn't finish is wasted and you just start all over. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go play a game or something while we wait, because this could probably take up to an hour. Um, depending on your drives, it could take several hours. So just click that copying uh, data button. That way you can see the progress right here. That way you don't think it's just frozen and stuck on you. A lot of people do this. They get, hyper, they get stuck on the whole, it's not moving percentage, because it got to 73 real fast and then it stuck. So this program sucks because it's freezing. It's not freezing. You're just not looking at the details to see what's happening. So we'll show you what happens next when that portion is done. So it's been about an hour since I showed you that part where it's analyzing. Now it's copying the data speeds at 36.67 megabytes per second, which will take us about two hours to copy our 362.97 gigabytes of data. If they were both NVMe, it'd be much faster than that. But a lot of that's because of the fact that we are going through USB 3.0. But this is the part where I said, go to Netflix, watch a movie, go play some games on a different computer. Obviously while it's copying, copying files, you don't wanna be changing things on the system, right? So let the system be, go do something else. We'll come back in a couple hours. All right, so it's been about four hours later, almost four hours since we started this process. So after analyzing the disk, verifying that there was enough space on the disk, and then copying all the files, which again was like not even 400 gigabytes, took several hours. But fortunately, by it taking so long, you know that it's actually going in and getting every single file cloned um, byte for byte, which is exactly what we want. So it says, congratulations, the clone task has completed successfully. So now if we just go ahead and click finish, that's it, We're, it's back to the start. So now I'm gonna come in here to uh, this PC and check it out. Our file structure should be exactly the same. So if we open up that up, or open that up, we've got AMD, keep vid, kid, kids videos, blah, blah, blah. This is videos for my, my daughters, they like to make videos at home. So here you can see it, it's basically exactly the same. So there you go, you can see it is exactly the same in the way it's ordered. The dates of everything is even the same. See, the last time that was modified, 11, 7, 20, 20, 932, 11, 7, 2020, 932. So it's all identical. Now, 
This is the part where I said, if you had a drive that's larger than the one you're copying from, you would now have an unallocated partition on there. So it would look like a second drive according to Windows. Um, what you wanna do now, if that's the case, is open up this partition analyzer or partition assistant. So this is the drive we copied from there to here. And if this was, let's say, the one terabyte mark, you would see a line there, just like you see here, these are different partitions. So you see these little separated lines. Uh, you would see an unallocated partition on the end, and then you'd be able to use this tool to actually extend the partition or remove the partition entirely. Uh, it's up to you. Simple enough, again, it's another free utility, and it's just called OEMI, AOMEI Partition Assistant 9.0. So now I wanna see if everything worked. What I'm gonna do, take that drive, I'm gonna attach it to a SATA cable like this, I'm gonna just plug in SATA power and let it hang out the back, and I'm gonna see if it will boot in to Windows 10 after doing that clone. There's my drive, that popped up. That was very satisfying, wasn't it? Whoa, okay, caught it. <laughs> so now we're just gonna plug it in the back. So now, I'm just gonna turn it on. I'm gonna go to the BIOS, and I'm going to do a forced boot on that drive. Oh, look, it shows up here, boot option two, Windows Boot Manager, SATA 6G. So that's our clone drive right there. We already see the Windows Boot Manager copied. Um, so here it is right here, Windows Boot Manager, SATA 6G, uh, Patriot Ignite 960. So we're gonna boot off that. Windows is loading. It's getting things kind of ready. Oh, look at that. Clearly this was nebulous drive that I cloned. So this is technically its first time booting off of that, but check it out. Here we are now. The system is completely booted. If I right click and we look at our drives and stuff, check it out. This PC, now drive C is our 960 gig. And then this was our original drive that we booted from last time. So what took a second there was the fact that it had to remap those drives. So essentially right now, anything that would be installed on another drive that has, look at all these broken links right here, you see this? That's because a lot of these things might have to be remapped and clicking on them usually is all it takes to get it to fix itself. And these are all my games. Oh, you know why those are all broken? Because this drive came out of Nebula and the drive that those are installed in is no longer in the system. But if they were, those, these wouldn't be dead links like they are. So as you can see, and it wants me to re-log into Microsoft account because of the fact that a clone drive doesn't actually clone over the user accounts like that. You have to re-log in. That's about the worst thing you'd have to deal with. But as you can see, we've cloned Windows 10 we're fully booted on it, and we did it for free. No, they did not sponsor this video at all. This is just an, a, a program that I happen to know that has a free version that will allow you to actually clone your Windows 10 without having to pay for it. So I'll put a link down in the description below. It's probably gonna break the website. So if you guys are watching this video right now and you're like, the website's not working, it's because I accidentally DDoSed them by simply showing this to you guys. But I've been asked to do this video so many times, and I thought it was important to actually share it with you. So as you can see, it all worked flawlessly. This also works really well to do uh, backups. This program does also have uh, backup features built in where every night or every other night you can have it save an image of your drive or an ISO of it to another drive, which that drive will do nothing but sit there as like a redundant backup, which is uh, how a lot of our systems work here. Every, every day Phil's system is backed up, you know, and you, he does it manually, but you could do it through a, uh, a system like this where every night it would do it if their computer is left on. I hope this showed you guys it's not hard. And the amount of people that told me you can't clone Windows 10 clearly are wrong. So there you go, guys. If you like this video, do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. If you're new around here, feel free to hit that subscribe button. It is free. I mean, I pay you guys two cents, essentially. You know, stupid dad joke there. But if you guys also know someone that's trying to clone Windows 10, share this video with them. Or if you wanna, if you built another computer and you wanna clone your drive, there you go. There's an ethics discussion in there, I guess, about whether or not cloning it is um, legal, legit, whatever. What's gonna happen though, is if you take a clone drive and you put it in another system with all different hardware, it's gonna prompt you to reactivate anyway. And how you go about that, whether it's buy a new key or reactivate the key or whatever, totally on you. I'm not responsible how you guys handle that. But as you see, you can clone Windows 10 flawlessly and effortlessly. It just took about four hours of going and doing things. So I spent about what? What would you say, Nick? If I wasn't doing a video, I could have done the entire like input process in like three minutes, five minutes worth of setup. 
four hours worth of doing other things. And then you guys saw how long it took me to get it up and running. It took longer to put a drive in here and get it all set up than to actually just boot the system. Didn't even have to change anything in the BIOS technically, maybe the boot order. Make sure that drive is your boot, your main boot drive. All right, guys, I've rambled on enough, long enough to make this video 10 minutes long. All right, we'll see you in the next one. Clone your drives.